Today we will explore JavaScript enumeration and why it matters. This is a critical skill to have if you want to level up your penetration testing or bug bounty hunting game. Yet, not everyone does it, partly because it is a boring exercise and it consumes most of your time, not to mention how intimidated you might feel reading someone else's code. Hopefully, this episode will help you overcome these hurdles and give you the tools you need to make JavaScript enumeration less painful. We will first understand how it can lead to serious security bugs. Then, we will discover different ways to properly do it. So, stay with me until the end because you will definitely learn more hacking tricks along the way. Why JavaScript enumeration matters If you don't perform JavaScript enumeration during your hacking engagements, you are overlooking a vital portion of your target web application. In fact, JavaScript powers the client side, meaning that all the logic that happens before hitting the back-end server is there. Think about it. You have half of the code that you can look through, and code never lies. If there is an error, the code will tell you, you just have to look through it. JavaScript enumeration can give you easy wins. Because of bad coding practices, the developers can unintentionally introduce low-hanging security bugs in the JavaScript code, ready to be exploited by entry-level hackers. Sloppy coding can include hard-coded credentials, hidden web page URLs with no authentication, or even back-end API endpoints with broken access control flaws. For example, by simply enumerating the code for API endpoints, you can find some unprotected ones. If you want to learn a real-world example of how I found a serious account takeover flaw, make sure to visit the previous episode, where I talk about account takeover. JavaScript enumeration helps you understand how the application works. While you are looking through the code for hard-coded credentials and API endpoints, you will naturally get a feel of the structure, the coding style, and what the web application does. If you don't get that, don't worry though, it comes with practice. The more you do it, the easier it becomes. We will explore shortly how you can start doing it. And lastly, JavaScript enumeration can give you deep and serious bugs. Besides the low-hanging fruits which you can find using JavaScript enumeration, you can uncover hidden issues which fewer people are looking for. These are typically DOM XSS vulnerabilities that you can exploit through things like post-message events or the usage of dangerous JavaScript syncs and sources. If you want to learn and practice DOM XSS, you can visit Port Swigger's article. The links are in the description. For example, a developer might use the path part of the URL to populate the DOM using the sync inner HTML. In this case, you can inject malicious JavaScript code that will be reflected in the DOM without proper encoding, leading to DOM XSS. JavaScript enumeration simplified with tools. When you enumerate JavaScript, it can be intimidating, hard or time-consuming. If that's the case for you, maybe you are doing it the wrong way. Maybe you jump onto random JavaScript files and look for low-hanging fruits only. You might get lucky once, but you won't find great and consistent bugs. At least you won't cover the entire attack surface. Instead, I suggest you first extract all the JavaScript files, then browse through them, and then you can focus on specific parts which seem interesting. You can use various tools that will assist you during this exercise. These are the ones I found helpful, but if you prefer other tools, feel free to suggest them in the comments. The first step, extracting JavaScript. When you are browsing the target, all you have sometimes is the login page. But that's fine. Once you finish browsing all the accessible features, your web proxy should have recorded all the JavaScript files. I like to use Burp Suit Professional to extract them all at once, but you can use other alternatives, such as manually downloading all the JavaScript files from Burp Suit Community Edition, which is the free version of Burp Suit Pro. 
you right click on your target root entry in the sitemap, then choose the Find Scripts option under the Engagement tool in the Contextual menu. From there, you click on Export Scripts and choose a file to store them. I like to store them because I will be using the next tools to look for specific things, like endpoints, secrets, etc. Step 2. Beautify JavaScript From my experience, most of the JavaScript files are obfuscated and packed into one single line. Therefore, it's hard to deal with them as they are. Luckily, there are tools which help at least structure them into readable JavaScript code. The one I use is JS Beautifier, a command line tool that accepts a file as input and beautifies it, unpacks it or deobfuscates it into a resulting file. First, you install it using pip, like pip install JS Beautifier. Then you run it with js beautify o at file.txt and then scripts.txt. This will output the file outfile.txt, which you can easily browse through. It's time for the next step finding the juicy data we are all looking for. I like to start with grep to get a feel of what I'm expecting. The general command is grep dash dash color dash i term out file dot txt you just change the word term with what you're looking for for example try words like secret admin password or token to find hard-coded secrets alternatively you can use a path prefix to look for endpoints say you noticed that all api endpoints start with api in this case, you can substitute the word term in the grep command with API to collect all the API endpoints. Once you grab some endpoints and hopefully some secrets, you can focus on areas of interest within the JavaScript files. JavaScript enumeration using Chrome DevTools If you don't have Burp Suite Pro or you don't want to parse the entire JavaScript files, you can use your built-in web browser developer tools. I like to use the Chrome browser for that purpose. Looking for keywords across the entire website. In Chrome, you can open the developer tools using the shortcut Command Option I on Mac or Control Shift I on Windows. From there, choose the Sources tab. Once inside, you will see the different files in a tree on the left. Hit Command Option F on Mac or Control Shift F on Windows and a search menu will appear in the bottom. Type the keywords you found from the previous steps to locate where exactly they appear in the client side source code. From there, choose one of the results and click on it and it will load the JavaScript file in the main screen. Once you choose a JavaScript file, it may appear obfuscated or minified. Don't worry, Chrome can make it readable. You just have to click on the pretty print button. Alternatively, there is a button with curly braces on the bottom of the screen, which you can click on as well. From there, hit Command F on Mac or Control F on Windows and look for your keyword, such as API key. JavaScript enumeration using breakpoints. Once you focus on a particular snippet within a JavaScript file which brings your attention, you might find it hard to understand what the code does. This can be due to random variable or function names, or simply because you can't understand what the code does. In this case, you can set a breakpoint on one or multiple lines, then refresh the page. Once the client-side code hits the breakpoint, you can debug it like you would do in any code editor using the controls you have on the menu in the right. After mapping the application, collecting all JavaScript files, looking for interesting areas and debugging the JavaScript code, it really depends on your experience and creativity to find interesting bugs. However, without the prior steps, you wouldn't be able to focus on the areas that matter. The following are examples which illustrate what hackers have found using JavaScript enumeration. 
post message DOM XSS vulnerabilities. In this great article, which is linked in the description, Matthias explains how he performed JavaScript enumeration using the very steps you discovered earlier to find an exploited DOM XSS vulnerability due to a misconfiguration in the post message event handling. Exploiting a token leak to disclose your PayPal password. In this blog post, Alex, a security researcher and bug bounty hunter, could exfiltrate your PayPal password through a token leak. He started with JavaScript enumeration and found an interesting endpoint that he was able to understand and exploit. Link in the description. Hopefully, you now understand why you should perform JavaScript enumeration, but most importantly, you have a methodical approach and the tools to help you during the process. If you found this content helpful, make sure to like, comment and subscribe to this channel so that you get updates whenever I publish a new video on ethical hacking and bug bounty hunting. If you're new to hacking and want to learn the basics, check out the free OWASP top 10 theory and hands-on training on thehackerish.com and apply your knowledge on the lab which supports it. If you enjoy learning with videos, I invite you to watch the OWASP top 10 YouTube playlist. However, I encourage you to first try to solve the lab exercises so that you don't spoil them. Don't forget that there are supporting blog posts for most of the videos you watch on this YouTube channel. I also encourage you to subscribe to the Friday newsletter on thehackerish.com to gain some new hacking knowledge at the end of the week. If you enjoy listening while doing other things at the same time, check out the Hack for Fun and Profit podcast, link in the description box. Until next time, stay curious, keep learning, and go find some bugs.